Welcome to week five of Fantasy Football. In this show, we're going to take a look at the weekly rankings as well. We're going to take a look at our rest of the season rankings and talk about how you can get that for free and give you the latest news. All coming up now. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Gary Kurtzman and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants and Eric... A quarter of the season is now over. Week four is in the books. Yes, and uh, hopefully you're at least two and two in your leagues by following half of our advice. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to say if you'd be 4-0 or 0-4. Oh I was intentional. Didn't listen. <laughs> but week, week four was a very interesting week, and uh, landscape changing with a uh, couple of items that came to light this week. Yeah, so let's get right to it. Temper that expectation. He said he was going to be back. Not week 11, which is what his owners had feared is kind of a worst case scenario. He's going to come back in week 7. Sweet mother of God, what is the hold up? <laughs> that is what all of his owners are saying. Now, this is, of course, coming into week 5. He's not going to go back to week Oh, by the way, week 7 is a bye week. He's not actually going to play until week 8. Why, oh, why, oh, why is he doing that? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. If he Comes back in week seven, he gets paid $850,000 for that week and doesn't have to play a game. That's not bad for a week's, quote, work. Um, also, I think more to the point, quite frankly, is that's the game that's right before the NFL trade deadline. Now, that does not mean, of course, that the Steelers are going to trade him, nor does it mean that Le'Veon Bell gets to dictate whether he's traded or not. But remember this, folks. He has to sign the tender in order to get traded. That's per the CBA. And... He controls that. He controls whether he signs the, t- uh, the tender of Week 7 or not. So effectively, Le'Veon Bell has to approve any trade that gets made. But, of course, he needs to come back before the trade deadline to facilitate that. That is October 10th, which means he has to come back by Week 7. I think that's the real reason uh, to motivate for the timing. But good news, folks. Le'Veon Bell owners, three weeks left to go. You get your first-round draft pick. In essence, be wary of those owners in your league who are shipping and shopping James Conner. <laughs> right, right. Although if he gets traded, James Conner would still be, you know, fringe RB1 material. But the odds of him getting traded are pretty low. All right. So uh, big news that because it, it had a lot of fanfare with flipping the finger and all. Earl Thomas, really sad. If, uh, really good guy and sad uh, if you're a Seahawk fan that Earl Thomas broke his leg. Um, so he probably will not be in a Seahawk uniform again. Um, so uh, you might go, well, why are we going over this? What's the fantasy implications? Because, yes, it hurts the Seattle defense, but you weren't starting Seattle's defense anyway. Um, but I really think this is going to force Seattle to throw more. Look, for the last three or four years in a row, Russell Wilson has always done better in the second half of the year uh, than the first because he's had to throw it more. I think that's going to happen this year. I've, I've seen different people that are wondering, hey, should I cut Russell Wilson? No. Put down that knife. <laughs> Don't cut Russell Wilson. Um, I think this, uh, and with a healthy Doug Baldwin, actually helps Russell Wilson uh, in the long run. Yeah, no doubt about it. The worse defense you have, the better it is to have the quarterback. You, you always like to be behind a throw. So uh, more news. A couple things. One, speaking of quarterbacks, Jameis Winston. Hello, and here's the keys to the Corvettes. Or this year, probably a more inapt analogy would be a Porsche. Tampa Bay is the number one passing offense in football, even after that putrid game against, uh, that they played last week against Chicago. Number one passing offense that just ditched its starting quarterback. That, folks, has never happened in the history of the NFL yeah, it's happening in Tampa Bay. They're handing it to Jameis Winston because he need, they need to find out if he's the quarterback of the future. So any excuse they could to jettison Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, 
Why does this matter? Well, of course it matters. If you were patient enough to carry Jameis Winston on your roster, you have been rewarded. If somebody cut him, folks, go out and grab him immediately. Why? Number one passing offense had much less to do with Ryan Pitchpatrick, had much more to do with the number one rated offensive line in football, and... For God's sake, three receivers in the top 20 and Deshaun Jackson, Chris Godwin, and Mike Evans. Oh, not to mention a top five tight end and O.J. Howard, who will be back in two to three weeks. Um, look, Win- Jam- Jameis Winston is talented to begin with. He could probably do more with his offense than Ryan Fitzpatrick did. It is a pitcher-perfect situation for a guy who I think most everybody predicts is going to be a top 10 quarterback going forward. And fantasy-wise, one thing Winston gives you that Fitzpatrick doesn't, he can do more with his legs. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. it. It's just, it's a fantastic situation uh, for a quarterback who suddenly has top five potential. Um, other news item, speaking of patience, carrying guys on your roster, suspensions are now over. We are four weeks into the NFL. That means if you took some drugs, <laughs> you're now free to play and probably take them again because over there half the players do. So not to be cynical, but Mark Ingram. And, gee, did we mention Jameis Winston? Nah, he grew up, he didn't take drugs, but same thing. Oh, and by the way, Julian Edelman, especially Mark Ingram and Julian Edelman, talk about teams that miss these guys tremendously. Julian Edelman has always been a 1,000-yard and three or four touchdown receiver. Mark Ingram, over the last two years, has averaged nearly 100 yards a game and 11 touchdowns per season. Prorate that to the end of the year. That's your RB7. These guys' teams desperately need these guys, and they're coming back. A couple defenses that get better, too. Vontez Perfect, uh, you know, all-pro linebacker out of Cincinnati. David Irving, all-pro t- uh, defensive tackle over the Cowboys. Their pass rush and, uh, you know, for the Bengals and, excuse me, pass rush for the Cowboys, uh, pass defense uh, for the Bengals are about to get a lot better. These are big changes for these teams, Eric. Quick question, Gary. Uh, Looking at the Edelman situation, looking at Ingram, what other player on one of those teams do you think is hurt the most by them coming back? If you're an owner of that other Uh, guy. Let's see, Patriots, um, Chris Hogan. Because, you know, he's going to lose those over the middle routes. Uh, he's potentially close to irrelevant at this point, which is shocking to say, frankly. Um, James White will probably catch a few last passes. And, you know, nobody, I, I think there's enough in New Orleans to feed both Kamara. Now, Kamara's been the RB1. He's literally been even more valuable than Todd Gurley. That's about to change, but he's still going to be first round material, even with Mark Ingram. I just think that offense gets better, and there's a pie big enough for both of them, frankly. Sounds good. Let's turn our attention to week five rankings. This is going to help you with the start and sit decisions. Reminder, you simply go to our website at fantasyfootballconsultants.net to get our full list of rankings for quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, defenses, and even kickers. We just wanted to highlight a couple of guys uh, on that, that list at quarterback. Gary, I have been so impressed with Jared Goff. His uh, mm-hmm. development uh, this year has been incredible. He's uh, averaged 350 yards uh, passing and really hitting all the different weapons on his, on his team, whether it's Gurley out of the backfield or Cooper Cup or Robert Brooks or Brandon Cooks. Um, and that, that Ram team and the offense is really clicking on all cylinders. He's thrown for almost three TDs per game. Um, we have him ranked at number six this year, but the one thing, this, this week, but the one thing is, if you drafted Goff, my guess is he's gone from your bench to your starter. Oh, and he should, because right now, as a season, if the season ended today, he would be your NFL most valuable player. Um, he and Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas, anyway. And the reality is this, he's matchup proof. The Rams beat teams by an average of 15 points a game, and yet Goff throws for 350 and three touchdowns in every game. It just it doesn't matter if they're up or down. He's going to get his. That boy's going to eat every single game. you got to love Jared Goff. As for a running back, who do I want to highlight? DJ David Johnson. He's the number five running back on our list. Why? Oh, because they finally, Bruce Arians has finally gotten the memo to give him more touches. He got Don't give Bruce Arians a hard time. He's on the booth <laughs> yeah. for, for CBS. Uh, he retired last so year. He, the new coach. Yeah, you got to get blah, 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 mad at him. Yeah, him, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> point being, they're finally giving him more touches. Now, one game doth not a trend make. 
But it was nice to see him getting close to 25 touches. He got 24, as opposed to 16, 14, and 14 in the first three weeks. That's all that stood between David Johnson and first-round production. He should be able to do it this week again against the 49ers. I don't think I need to tell you how good the talent he is. If he gets the opportunities, he's going to perform even with eight guys in the box. He's had eight guys in the box for years, folks. He just needs the touches. Finally, at least after one game, he got him. I think he's going to do it again. That's your RB5 who's got an RB1 ceiling. And if he can get better play out of Josh Rosen, because Sam Bradford was just awful, truly the worst quarterback, played as the worst quarterback in the NFL, um, you know, hopefully that'll lighten up the eight men in the, the box. Let's look at the wide receivers. Um, at wide receiver, let me simply ask you a quick question. You know that the Detroit Lions have a, a three-headed monster at wide receiver between Marvin Jones, Golden Tate, and Kenny Galladay. Who has who has been most effective this year? What's your answer? You are the weakest link. Goodbye. That is true. If you said if you, if you said exactly. Marvin Jones Jr., uh, he was last in all of the three categories. And whether he's talking about targets, receptions, yards, RTDs. Actually, who's leading in each of those? It's the same guy. It's Golden Tate. He isn't quite getting the, the, the publicity, uh, and he's right now ranked on our list at number 18. And even that makes people sometimes feel... I tell you, I don't get no respect. No respect at all. Yeah, and, you know, they're going to be thrown like crazy this week, right? That game is going to be a shootout. It's one of the highest over-unders of any game. And, man... You, you just you got to love Detroit's you know passing offense, and you got to love the number one receiver on it. I totally agree. That's a great pick. Um, tight end. Who's had the most fantasy points for tight end in football? Do you think it's Gronk? I think it's Kelsey? Maybe Zach Ertz? Try Jared Cook of the Oakland Raiders. We now have four games, and we have a sense of how coaches are using their players. Gruden loves the mismatch, and he's not afraid to feed it all day long. And for the Raiders... The mismatch is a Jared Cook because teams are still loading up on Amari Cooper, poor guy. Poor owners that have him. Yeah, like yours truly. Jared Cook is being spoon-fed all day long. Leads the First of all, leads all tight ends and targets and yards and touchdowns, for God's sakes. Certainly leads the Raiders in all three categories. You know what? He is number five on our list, and he's creeping up every week as we continue to trust him more. He's got the ceiling to be a tight end one. He has been a tight end one all year long, for God's sakes. And, oh, by the way, they're playing the Chargers, a team that typically uh, you know, performs in shootouts, which is great for the Raiders, great for Jared Cook. I love this guy's ceiling. Frankly, under John Gruden, I love this guy's potential. Um, he's never made a believer out of me in past years, but he's finally making one out of me this year. That's the guy I want to highlight with a truly high ceiling. All right, I smell what Jared is cooking. And the Dumbo. defense that we uh, want to talk about real briefly is the Tennessee Titans. Um, look, run, don't walk to your waiver wire if Tennessee is still available. If you're streaming defenses, uh, this is the defense that we think that you should be able to grab this week at uh, number two. They play the Buffalo Bills. They're 31st out of 32 teams in, in offense. Uh, the Titans can put pressure on the quarterback. They're the seventh in uh, sacks. Uh, Tennessee is one to think about if you're in season-long fantasy this week. Absolutely. Great picks. All right. So, um, Gary, we want to quickly talk a little bit about our uh, rest of the season rankings, which uh, will come out this particular weekend. I know you spent time on them. Any quick uh, lessons learned uh, after preparing all the projections for the season long? We have four, uh, four games in the books, which means we have enough data now to do a redraft, a reprojections, and folks, more than any other time in years, the difference between the first round, uh, you know, sort of pre-draft rankings and the first round after week four rankings, rest of season rankings, is more different with more changes and more players moving around than any other time in years. And I'm telling you, if you want to make the right smart, uh, you know, trade proposals, uh, you know, waiver wire decisions, even start and sit in decisions, you have got 
to take a look at there are west our rest of season projections they are quantitatively developed based on statistical modeling which i used to use for fortune 50 teams which can now be applied to the nfl prognostication and i'm telling you folks there are going to be some big changes with these rankings so you really need to take a look fortune 50 companies or teams uh companies okay so um so with that, if you're interested, uh, go to our website, fantasyfootballconsultants.net. Any blog post will also include it in our description uh, and fill out the box. It's free, um, and we'll, we'll send you those rankings when they're done, uh, which should be by this weekend. So we're done with this video. Thanks for joining us, uh, and until our next video, we will see you then. See you next time.